Time for a water heater upgrade. Hi, this is Jim from RV4x40.com. Welcome to the channel today. We're glad you could join us. This is in our category of tips and tricks about working with an RV. And I've done a review on this uh, water heater that came with our coach, a 2014 Tiffin uh, Fighting uh, 40 QBH is the floor plan. I did a review on that and I'll put a link up above in a, in a clip. And uh, was not one of the things we really liked about this coach. I'm going into that in detail in the in the review. Full disclosure here, I needed to change out the uh, pressure relief valve. It had been used many, many times in the course of troubleshooting the RV. And the other day when we, we first added water to the RV and turned the pressure on, uh, it released when it shouldn't have, so it was time to change it. And not realizing it was going into a plastic fitting, I over-tightened the new one and crack that fitting so it's had a leak which I repaired to some extent uh, with some epoxy and uh, that could not get to all the places it was leaking so we still have a slow drip and we have the water pressure on so had been researching ways to replace this and uh, wanted to actually replace it if I could with a conventional tanked water heater with both gas and electric uh, sources of energy talked to Tiffin about that and they really discouraged that as the the structure underneath of the water heater here was not built to carry the weight of having a tank uh, of water in there because water is eight point something pounds per, per gallon. So even a six gallon uh, water heater adds 50 pounds of weight and a, a 12 gallon adds uh, quite a bit more weight as you can tell, which is what we would have wanted. Plus there is no electric wiring uh, to this area in the coach. I would have had to figure out a way to run 110 volt power. Interestingly enough, the circuit breaker system for the power does have a circuit breaker installed uh, for the water heater, but according to the folks at, at Tiffin, it was not actually wired that way, so I have no idea if that breaker is, is not wired anywhere, if it's used for something else, or if it, it actually does have 110 volt wiring in there. So in researching different options, I found a couple of them uh, that are still the tankless type, so the weight isn't an issue. They're, roughly the same size as this water heater and uh, ended up after a bunch of reviews and looking at the way they operate and deciding to go with a Truma water heater. That's a bit fortunate because with the water leak we do have a problem here uh, with keeping the water on all the time and we are currently in Indiana and the Truma factory is up in uh, Elkhart where most of the RVs in this country are made and they offer installation there at the factory so I have an appointment to go up there in a couple of days and get the water heater replaced. I'm not sure if they'll let me video that or if we're able to do anything about the installation, but we'll cover the uh, review of the new Truma water heater after we get it installed and let you know how that all worked out. 
it was a bit of a challenge to get the old uh, precision temperature water heater out. You can see from the bent edges it had to be pried loose. There was a fair amount of butyl tape uh, used around this unit to seal it, which is fine. And uh, it took a lot of prying and prodding to get the tape cut loose, but once that was done it came out fairly easily. All the connections, of course, had to be uh, undone from inside. There's an access hatch uh, in the back bathroom to get to the, the back side of the water heater. So that was done. This unit was pried out of the way and set aside. And here, through the magic of spending some money, the old gets transformed into the new Truma water heater. And then you can see the unit from the back side. It's fairly simple. There's an electrical connection. There's a water inlet, a water outlet, and not totally visible on the left side you'll see a small black hole which is the grommet that the propane line has to feed through eventually. Here you can see the residue of the butyl tape that was left around the opening. We took out the previous water heater. The tech is working on cleaning that up. You can also see where the paint stops so we're going to need to cover that up with the new cover when we get it installed. Since there is that area of butyl tape and a whole section around the old hot water heater that was not painted, it was installed before the coach was painted apparently, and so there is an area of paint that would have to be redone if we can't cover it up with the cover. So the tech spent a fair amount of time and tried two different covers and ended up with the largest one they make, but spent a fair amount of time trying to get that aligned where it was square with the trim on the coach as well as in a location he could get the water heater into the opening properly and have everything lined up. So spent a lot of time doing that, make sure that, that was going to work okay. Once he had that done, then he positioned the uh, metal frame, which is like a picture frame that goes around the opening. It sets the size of the opening for the Truma water heater to just fit into, and then that metal frame is attached securely with a whole bunch of screws to the coach, and there's caulk put around the inside edge of that to make a seal between the coach and the, and the entrance into the water compartment. So everything should be pretty watertight, and when it's all done, we'll be able to go to the next step. So here he is sliding the new Truma water heater into the opening. And it's a very tight fit. The uh, water heater just fits in. If you saw one of the previous pictures of the inside, there was a 2x4 put in there to raise up the inside and give some support to the back side of the new water heater. And uh, the biggest problem we had was, after it was in, was getting the gas line to feed through that hole on the right. Truma does make a rear entrance a kit uh, to adapt it to a rear entrance fitting but the tech really didn't want to use that and eventually he was able to, with a, a pull wire to finagle the, the hose and get it through the grommet and get it hooked up. And there's a control that goes inside for this water heater. The wire for that also comes through that same grommet. The last thing to do is to install the final finish frame. It goes around and we were fortunate this frame is just big enough to cover up the square corners from the previous uh, panel the way it was installed. So other than cleaning up a little bit of the uh, places around the edge. Uh, there won't be need to be any painting done on the coach and then once we get back to some place where be stationary for a little bit we'll take that cover off and take it to a body shop and have them match the paint so it'll be red uh, like the old door was. This is a view from the inside of the cabinet in the back bathroom of this particular floor plan and there's an access to cover there you can take off and uh, do the hookups to the back. It would have been very simple with the back hookup on the gas, but like I say, it was run around to the side and in. The Truma does have a switch controller that needs to go somewhere inside of the RV. In this case, the wall you see is the wall to the washer and dryer cabinet, and between the washer and that wall, there's enough room to get your hand in barely. And so we used a electrical fish tape, a steel tape, to. Uh, run it down to the floor and there's openings at the back of the cabinet to uh, run run through. The tech was using his hand, grabbed hold of that steel tape and we were able to then pull the control wire up. And the hole we drilled in the wall is fairly large. It's uh, probably a two inch diameter or so hole to put that controller in. And then the uh, cable just plugs into it. 
So interestingly, in the Truma, with this controller, you have uh, several things that it does. One of which is there's a cleaning operation you could run to keep the uh, water heater chamber from becoming too calcified. And they uh, sell tablets that do that. And it's a cycle that runs and, and cleans out the inside of the uh, water heater to keep calcium from building up from, from hard water. It has an off position, of course. There's also a defrost position. If you buy an optional electric uh, element that goes into the water heater, uh, it will keep the water heater from freezing down to about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, uh, there's a small chamber in this uh, water heater, which is part of how it works. And that chamber would normally be held at a temperature of 41 degrees, and then the gas will come on lightly, and it'll heat it up a little bit, and then it'll turn back off. But that keeps it from freezing, but doesn't use propane in a, a kind of normal temperatures. That's your echo mode, as they call it. It also has a comfort mode, which that chamber, uh, which is a liter and a half, uh, is heated up to 105 degrees minimum and maybe 115 degrees before the flame cuts back off. So as soon as you turn a water faucet on, you have some warm water that's in the system that can immediately show up. And with this water heater, uh, we found that not to be necessary because it comes on quickly and it's a 60,000 BTU burner. So you get water up to temperature very, very quickly. It's only been a couple of days since we had the Truma water heater installed, but my wife and I both are very happy that we went ahead with this change. We had thought about this before. I did a review of the existing uh, precision temperature water heater, which is RV550 by part number, and uh, we were not very happy with that. It was a complete review, and I'll put a link on that uh, up in the top here. You can check that out if you're interested. So we'd already been looking at different water heaters. I did some research on that and just was not at the point now between travel situations and trying to get other things done and and quite frankly the money involved to uh, to go off and start swapping water heaters out and there were options that we were still considering. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, I actually broke the water heater trying to replace the pressure relief valve because it was failing. And uh, in retrospect, we were both happy that that actually happened. We're now in a situation where when we take a shower, we get the water up there, we can do the normal thing of adjusting the amount of cold water you have ratio to the hot water, and that temperature holds. We can do the Navy shower thing and turn the water off while we're doing part of our shower routine and don't need the water running. Turn it back on and we don't get the blast of cold water we got with the other water heater. And so it holds this temperature extremely well and it's very, very useful that way. The water that's getting up to the uh, kitchen area is hotter. I believe that's because we have a hotter temperature to start with out of the water heater, uh, but it also is much more consistent. My wife did not like using the, the water at the sink to wash dishes because she likes to rinse them and turn the water on and off a lot. And every time you turn the water off previously before it get hot again, uh, it was a considerable length of time and so the water gradually was getting cooler and cooler as she was using it. So now she has all the hot water that she wants and so that's a, that's a good deal. Particularly when you're in a situation where you may have a lot of water with city water hookup, but if you don't have a, a sewer connection right at the RV, because of the excess water you would use with the other water heater trying to take a shower, it would cause the gray tank to fill up faster. That's never good. And if you're boondocking, of course, uh, the, the fresh water supply itself is very, very precious. So it was not going to be a good deal for us to boondock with uh, that system. And so now we're much more, much more pleased with this Druma water heater. And uh, right now, as this video is being made for another couple of months, I believe, they do have a discount of $300 off the price if you're replacing another instant on water heater. We were in Indiana, so we went to the factory center for the U.S. in Elkhart, uh, which a lot of stuff is based up there, and we were able to have it done in, in their shop right there. So it was a quick process. Uh, it took me longer to drive to Elkhart than it did for the uh, gentleman to install the new water heater complete. So that was, that was a good deal. The one thing that uh, I still don't particularly care about the instant on water heaters is that you are stuck with using propane. And uh, most of the people who build these water heaters will tell you, well, they use less propane than a conventional water heater does. And I think that may well be true in a normal operating mode where you're not using electricity. I will point out that if you have a conventional tanked water heater, that you have a choice of using just electricity. So if you're in a campground with electricity, you don't need to use any propane at all. And we found that a 12 gallon water heater worked fine for us. We had plenty of hot water and we were not ever concerned with running out of it. 
you can heat the water up fairly quickly in those water heaters. We, we left the uh, water heaters off most of the time. And if you were in a hurry, you could turn on both the electric and the propane, would heat the water up probably in about 20 minutes would, to get it completely hot. So certainly not instant on, but not a great deal of time if you have a little bit of time to think ahead. So uh, in our case, as I mentioned before, I had talked to Tiffin about the possibility of replacing uh, the precision with a, with a conventional water heater and they recommended against that because the uh, walls and the structure were not in place. It would take an awful lot of work to reinforce everything and then you had, so I had to run 110 volt power over to it. So not a good situation. Uh, I have heard from folks who have had it done and didn't ask how much it cost. But it's a, it's a good deal. It's a preliminary view for us. We may do a more in-depth review later on, but right now we're extremely happy with the, with the unit, with the way it performs. Uh, it's installed, it's working fine. The only thing left to do is to uh, get that cover painted when we get back uh, probably to the Austin area in a, in a few weeks and we'll have a chance to get that done. In the meantime, we hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, we'd appreciate it if you would do that. And then you can click on the bell icon, be notified when we post a new video. In the meantime, as we travel the highways and byways of America, we hope to run into you. If not, we'll see you next week on the channel on Thursday evening. Have a great day.